walking with God. Walking with God. But, but I want to share with you before I get into my message. Walking with God. I want to share this reading that just stuck in my spirit man. That fits this message I believe. Jesus. 
See, when you walk with the Lord, you can be sure that you will receive the nurturing needed to produce healthy, growing fruits in your spiritual walk. Amen. See, it is impossible for you to be walking with God and your life produce fruits that's bitter. But see, when you walk with God and you receive the proper nourishment from the Word of God, your fruits is going to be sweet and everything you touch is going to grow. Can I get a witness in the audience? See, I want to let you know that God created us for fellowship with Him. He desires us to walk with Him. See, before the fall of man, Adam and Eve will walk and talk with God in the Garden of Eden. Yeah. But after they sinned, Jesus. after they sinned, somebody say afterwards, they were ashamed, yeah. the Bible said, yeah. and hid when they heard Jesus' voice coming through the garden. Their walk had changed. Amen. See, their sin had separated them from God. Yeah. But Jesus came to offer us forgiveness and respiration. He came to restore us. The Bible said all have sinned and came short of the glory of God. But Jesus came to bring us See, I want to let you know that the sacrifice of Jesus enables us to sacrifice him dying on the cross. Enable us to have a personal and close relationship with God through the Holy Spirit. John 14, 16 through 17. See, when you put your faith in Jesus, when you put your faith in Jesus, your relationship with God becomes more important in your life. Amen. This causes you to want to talk with him. It causes you to want to seek him. It causes you to want to please him and not some of your ways, but please God in all of your ways. This is what I'm talking about. But let, let me go to Genesis 25, 22. And I'm going to be talking about a young man by the name of Jacob. See, Jacob was not walking with God. Genesis 25, 22, and say the children, it goes back to the point when Jacob and Esau was being born. And the children struggled together within her, this in the mama's womb. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord why she was having such a hard time. She said, you're having a hard time because your walk is wrong. Genesis 25, 23 says, And the Lord said unto her, There are two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered was fulfilled, Behold, there was twins in her womb, and at the first came out red, and the other like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. And after that came his other brother, the brother, the other brother came out, and his hands took hold of Esau's heel, and his name was called 
his son. See, I told you that story because Jacob took the heel of his brother. Jacob was the younger and Esau was the oldest. It's the Bible, the prediction was already being that the younger shall be over the older. Well, Jacob didn't walk with God like he's supposed to. And Jacob was trickery according to this Jacob. And he began, Esau sold his birthright to Jacob. So Jacob had his birthright. And then Jacob wasn't satisfied. He wanted the blessings of Esau. And so he, him along with his mama, dressed him to appear to feel like Esau. And his daddy said, I feel Esau, but I hear Jacob. So the daddy blessed him and gave him the blessing to be a leader. See, Jacob wanted the position, but he didn't have the walk. See, what I'm trying to get you is a lot of us want to name ourselves as believers of God, but we're not walking like we should. So it was when Jacob, he see, see, Jacob went down the line and Esau got mad and Esau declared that he was going to kill Jacob. Jacob escaped the country and went to another country. But when it was time for Jacob to come back home, fear began to reign in his body because the, the word got to him that Esau was going to kill him. He had no authority, but he didn't have the walk with God. So I said, one night when all this was on Jacob's mind, God saw an angel. And the angel wrestled with Jacob. Yes, Lord. And Jacob wouldn't let the angel go. Yes, and in order for the angel to get away from Jacob, he knocked his heel out the socket. Yes, 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 and the Bible said, Jacob began to see the Lord and he walked his walk change. Yes, he walked with a limp. Yes, see, as long as Jacob was walking straight up, he yes. depended on himself. See, the reason All of 
the children, all of his children, to walk with him. Imagine that you, I see when I, 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 this came to mind, I began to think, imagine, I want each one of you just to imagine mm -hmm, that you and a close friend enjoy a walk down the city street, shopping, laughing, and talking, or walking down an old country road. So you are close in proximity with that person. You are conveying back and forth. You talk, you laugh, you listen, and you share your heart. Your attention is focused on the person to the inclusion of nobody else around you even exists. Well, walking with God is just like that. When you enter into an intimate heart relationship with God through faith in his son. See, he becomes our heart's greatest desire in knowing him and what hearing his voice and sharing our heart with him and seeking to please him becomes consuming. See, when the last time you had a talk with Jesus? I know. When the last time you said, Lord, I believe? When the last time you said, Lord, I remember? Jesus. See, when you begin to walk closely with God, he becomes everything to you. The song say, everything. You're everything to me. See, that happens when you begin to walk close with God. Meeting him is not an activity Amen. that you reserve on Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. It's not an activity that you got to get deep on Sunday morning. Amen. But walking with God, I said before, is an everyday thing. Mm -hmm. We live to fellowship with him. See, the goal of every Christian should be to live in a state of unbroken worship. Yeah. This is only possible when we walk with God. Unbroken worship. Yeah. Somebody say unbroken worship. Unbroken worship. See, unbroken worship is un broke. Yeah. No matter what comes, it won't separate my worship. Amen. No matter what happens, Amen. it won't separate yes. my worship. That's it. Because what we got to stop doing is praising God because of the blessings. Oh, praising him because of the door being open. But we got to learn how to praise God when the door not open. Can I get a With God means to choose to glorify Him in every way we can, Amen. regardless of the personal cost. Yes, and see, it's going to cost you something to walk with God. Amen. Mm. See, we want everything free. Anytime they say something free, we're in line to receive it. But I tell you, if you want to live right, it's going to cost you something. Yes, but is you willing to pay the price? Mm. See, salvation is free. That's a free gift. But when you get to salvation inside of you, you got to do something else to keep it. That's it. We're getting it, but we're losing it. Jesus. We live to fellowship with Him. Mm -hmm. Walking with God also means we cannot also walk with any. Walking with God does, means that we can't walk with evil people. Amen. People that's not believe like we believe. People that don't love God like we love him. Now, you know the reason why I say that? Hmm. 
Because how can two walk together Amen. except they agree? Amen. If you are not strong in your walk, two things going to happen. Either they going to draw you Amen. or you going to draw them. Amen. So if you're not strong in your walk, I recommend that you walk with someone can strengthen you. Amen. But if you're strong in your walk, then you can walk and be a fisherman of me. But until you get strong enough in your walk, then I advise you to walk with someone that can prop you up. Amen. Mm -hmm. yes, see, we choose, see, 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 if we come and the Lord begin to let me know that we come in our life to crossroads. Crossroad, if you go to the right, uh, God will lead you to the left. But you got to choose on this Christian walk which way you going to walk. Yes. See, the Bible said there is a narrow road. And there is a broad way, road, that leads to destruction. But on that narrow road, those that's willing to sacrifice for the Lord, the Bible said there's few followers. But on this broad road where anything is acceptable, It causes you something. Yeah. See, we don't live to please people. Amen. Surely you don't. Amen. But we live to please the Almighty God. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, Jesus. In my conclusion, Jesus, founder, perfecter of our faith. Hebrew 12, 1 through 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely let us run with endurance for the race that is set before us. See, the Bible let us know we got to walk before we can run. And until you learn how to walk with God, you can never run the race that's set before you. just Monday through Friday faith. and start developing that Saturday faith because we got to hit Sunday morning but we got to have faith every day and then when you see where the enemy has you so blocked up and you can't see God you got to say Lord help my unbelief help me to believe even though I don't see it help me to believe even though I don't feel it help me to believe even though I don't understand Help me, God. Because I want to walk with you. Psalm said, walk with me, Lord. While I'm on this tedious journey, Lord, I just need you to walk with me. And then Psalm says, although I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I'll feel no evil. Why? Thou with me. And the only way I can be assured that God is with me is I got to begin to learn how to walk with God. I got to walk up right. Woo! I feel a Sunday only. We can't have Sunday morning. We got to do some preparation during the weekdays. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Number two said, look into Jesus. The founder and the perfecter of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him and doeth the cross. Despising the shame. And seated at the 
the right hand of the throne of God. God did. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Whether you eat, drink, or whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. We don't have to ask no one how our service to God is. Because you know when you do it to the glory of God. And you know when you do it out of flesh. See, God ways are reflected in our thoughts, our actions, our motives, and our life choices because we spend so much time with him. Are you spending quality time with God? We spend quality time with our families. We spend quality time with our friends. We have to spend time on your job because you won't get paid. But do you, to have to spend time with everybody else, do you spend time with God? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Do you share the word with someone that you come in contact with? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus. See, the, I heard the older generation say, little prayer, little power. Much prayer, yes, Lord. Much, much power. Yes, yes. See, sometimes when the enemy comes in, yes. much prayer Jesus. are driving out your house. Yes, Lord. When the enemy comes in yes, Lord. and attack your eyes, yes, Lord. Jesus. the much prayer yes, Lord. are driving out your body. It is not difficult. It's not a hard job mm -hmm. to identify people who walk with God. Amen. Yes, Jesus. Let me, it got mighty quiet, but let me say that again. Amen. It's not difficult. No. Amen. You don't need no spiritual discernment Amen. to identify people that knows how to walk with God. See, their lives are as sharp and contrast with the world around them. They're like stars that shine in the midnight sky. You can identify. They produce the fruit of the spirit rather than the fruit of the fleshly desires. Acts 4.13 says, Peter and John, Peter and John had been arrested for preaching and were brought before the authorities. The members of the council was amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. For they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scripture. They were just common folk. But the authorities, they also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. <laughs> see, I can tell whether you've been with Jesus. Mm. And when we walk with God, Every day, the world cannot help to recognize. Jesus. Somebody say recognize because you might have quiet in here. Recognize that in spite of my imperfection and my lack of knowledge in some areas, I still have Jesus all over the outside. My spiritual man registers on the outside. It's not dressed up by our earthly attire. But when I begin to really focus and begin really to walk with God, then my inward man begin to come out on the outside and I'm clothed with righteousness. Yes, Lord. Oh, now, 
everyday thing, I'm sorry to tell you, it's not just Monday through Friday, but it's an everyday thing. Are you walking with God? Do you have that relationship with God? Do you believe if you call on God, he'll come? Do you just give God praise and hallelujah and thank you, Jesus, when blessings come your way? But all oh, when the trouble and the trials come, you want to keep God out the front door. It's not about so much what God gives you, but what are you giving him? What are you giving God if you're walking with God? He don't need no part-time lovers. God wants us full-time walking, talking, fellowship with him. How, how you going to know God if you don't spend time with God? If I ask the question, how many know Pastor Graham? Hands and just go on. I do. You know, oh. I remember this. Jesus. But do you really no. know me? That's it. That's the difference. You know about me. That's it. But you don't know no. me. Amen. Because if you knew me, Jesus. <laughs> some of the stuff you would not do. Amen. Let the church stand for prayer. Amen.